Good morning, everybody. Brian Newbert here from GoldenBlack.com here on Wednesday morning with today's GoldenBlack.com Purdue Basketball Daily. Yes, I did say we were going to do this every day. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just say things and then I have to live them down. So here we are. Uh, today's topic, I guess, um, already uh, <laughs> having to think about this more than I figured I would on day three. Uh, let's just talk about Zach Eady a little bit. Uh, perhaps you've heard of him. Um, Purdue's reigning national player of the year, Big Ten player of the year, um, the top returning player in college basketball by what I would think would be a relatively wide margin. Um, can he be better this season than he was last season? What more can he give Purdue this year? How do you define success for a guy who just had basically a, a best case scenario sort of individual season? Um, can Zach Eady be better this season? Uh, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the results, other than the NCAA tournament, of course, um, the margins would seem pretty narrow for him to be more productive, for him to be better. On the other side of the coin, there's a guy, I don't can't remember his name, but he's out there in college basketball bouncing around somewhere who's playing his seventh year of college basketball or in college basketball for the seventh year, better said. Zach Eady has been playing basketball of any kind for seven years. So with that relative inexperience to the game still, you have to view Zach Eady as like a third-year sophomore and not a, a fourth-year senior as he actually is because he's he's got such a limited background in basketball. How can you not get better? Um where those areas lie, uh, you know, I think he took an enormous jump as a defensive player last season. I thought he was one of the best, most influential defensive players in college basketball. Easily could have been Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Um, who won it? Trace Jackson Davis? Um, somebody like that. But I, I think he's he's got to be the odds-on front runner this year for Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, some rando always shows up on that list at the end of the year and is right there. But um, he was the most impactful, most influential defensive player, I think, in the Big Ten. I know Trace Jackson Davis blocked a lot of shots and thwarted a lot of shots, and I'm not taking that away from him. But I'm just saying Zach Eady's mere presence around the rim and being one of the best defensive rebounders. That counts as defense, by the way. Um, made him right there, put him right there with not only anybody in the Big Ten, but a lot of people in the country. Um, I do think one of Purdue's big priorities this season from a defensive perspective is protecting the rim better. Uh, I do not think that is as much a Zach Eady issue as it is an issue of someone getting to the rim to cover the rim when Zach Eady is either chasing somebody around, away from the basket, whatever it might be. Um, but in terms of raw rim protection from an individual player, I think you got about as good a season as, you know, Purdue's gotten from a big guy. I know there are other guys who've blocked more shots, but I think Zach Eady's presence was big time. I think he can get better. You can always get better. There's no such thing as good enough when you're seven foot four, 300 pounds, and you have to move your feet, guard and ball screens, things like that. When you have to chase shooters around the perimeter as he will on occasion this season, uh, you might get Hunter Dickinson again uh, in Honolulu. Um, we've seen what he's been able to do shooting threes against Purdue in the, in the past. Um, but th that's always going to be a big deal uh, for him or anybody his size. I think he's okay there, as is. But as I said, you can never be good enough because modern college basketball nowadays is spread you out, attack off the dribble. People are going to go after the big guy. They always do. Um He's had to learn to play this drop coverage and ball screen defense. Uh, and that's why you see guards periodically who can hit floaters, give Purdue real problems, because that's exactly how you attack that uh, when your guards can do it. Uh, I think maybe he can still get a little bit better in that. Uh, he's, you know, he's still relatively inexperienced there. Um, that's a really hard job because what you're trying to do is you're trying to guard two people at once and you have to be able to release from one to get to the other sometimes very quickly. Again, when you're dealing with the sort of aerodynamics seven foot four, 300 pounds is dealing with, uh, it's easier said than done. Um, but I do think there's real upside there for him from a defensive perspective. 
I think his passing last season really came a long way, and that's an element to his game where you can't overstate the importance because of the attention he's going to draw, um, how the lineups around him are going to work. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure at this point, but uh, it, there's going to be open shots for guys all season long. There's going to be cuts to the basket out of double teams for guys all year long, and it's going to be up to Edie to kind of weaponize that. Did a good job with that last year. Um, theoretically, there, there there should be upside there too. Wouldn't surprise me at all if if Purdue has the sort of season around him that it really needs to have to maximize Zach Eady's value. His assist numbers don't you know bump 40, 50, 60 percent this year, if not double. Um, I know that's a mouthful, but that that brings me to my greater point um, here is that Zach Eady's improvement really, to be honest with you, lies in everyone else because it's pretty evident that what people are going to try to do against Purdue, and they should do this against Purdue, is they should they should throw the house that they should throw the kitchen sink at Zach Eady like a lot of them have done over the years, and they should make Purdue beat them with threes. And that's how Purdue's season ended last season. The single biggest reason Purdue lost to Fairleigh Dickinson was because it couldn't make open threes. You can point to any number of other little things, um, but it really is that simple. If Purdue makes two or three more threes, if they shoot bad instead of like nuclear wasteland bad, they probably advance, and for all we know, they might have gone to the Final Four because everybody who goes to the Final Four seems to have to survive that one game. Um, but if Purdue consistently makes threes, if they take that 33% shooting, whatever it was last season, to 36%, 37%, but it's just more consistent across the board, I think that's where Zach Eady's value really, really, really comes out. And whether you want to call that improvement on Zach Eady's part, I don't know, but it is critical for Purdue to improve at helping Zach Eady improve, if that makes any sense whatsoever. It probably doesn't, but um, so he is going to, you know, he's going to get fouled left and right this season. He's not going to get all the calls he wants. Uh, he dealt with that much better last season, I think, from a mental perspective than he did the year before. Um, that's a hard thing. I mean, if, you think about it, imagine being him and you're just getting beaten up and you just have to live with it sometimes. Um, I do think that the universe will balance it out, itself out some and uh, there'll be a game or two where you know he probably has to worry about a little bit of foul trouble. It was remarkable what he did the last season in terms of not getting in foul trouble and I'm sure other Big Ten coaches have, have uh, spent a good amount of time on, in their lobbying efforts uh, over the last year or so to make sure that doesn't happen again. Um, but Defending without fouling, posting up without fouling, those are two very important things for him that uh, he can't do much better than he did last year, I don't think. But uh, maintaining that will be important for him. Uh, Purdue's going to use him a little bit differently from an offensive perspective. Not a ton. Don't expect him to come out here like Dirk Nowitzki shooting you know, threes off one leg this season if, if he takes three threes a month. I, I I would be, that would kind of be a general expectation for me. I don't anticipate him coming out, and I know people have strong opinions on this, but you got to understand seven foot four, 300 pounds at the rim, the best offensive rebounder in the country at the rim um, is not something you want to just hand over as an advantage. So you might see him shoot a jumper here and there, but what you're going to see, I think, is you're going to see him. Uh, roll into the basket even more in pick and roll. I think Purdue got sucker punched last year by how good he and Braden Smith were in that right away. And I think they expand that a little bit this year. They use the personnel around them maybe a little bit differently. I think you see him slipping out of handoffs a little bit more, kind of like Matt Harms used to do. That, that was kind of his bread and butter. Edie is nowhere near as quick and nimble as Matt Harms was, but I think he can do it. And I think he showed last year he's lighter on his feet than you would ever expect a guy who is that big to be on his feet. Um, he's not a ballerina by any means, but I think he can do some of that more dynamic offensive stuff, and you're going to see Purdue maybe put him in some different settings 
this year to give them a more dynamic looking offense. I think they're going to play a little bit of high low sometimes with Edie at the elbow, Trey Kaufman Ren when he's in at the four, um, kind of dive into the rim. I think that can really allow Zach Edie to do some different things offensively. Whether that helps him long term with his his, his 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 NBA highlight tape, great. But the bigger priority here is to make Purdue a better, more complete uh, offensive team this year than it was last year um, when Purdue was just too top-heavy, too reliant on one guy. Part of that solves itself as Braden Smith and Fletcher Lawyer grow up and you know Trey Kaufman-Rand kind of comes of age and you have more scores, um, you have more athleticism, but part of that too is just getting more out of Edie. He was just so good so fast, you were just obligated after Portland to just give him the ball on the block as many times as you possibly could. I, I don't know if that's necessarily going to repeat itself this year, but, you know, if it does, it worked last year, so why not this year? But I think Purdue does want to be a little bit more dynamic, a lot more balanced offensively, and that brings me to my point earlier about how Zach Eadie's improvement maybe lies in everybody else more than it lies in him. So that's what I got. That's our goldenblack.com. Uh, Purdue Basketball Daily for Wednesday, whatever the hell today is. Uh, just want to remind you all, um, you can subscribe to goldenblack.com uh, for $1 for your first month before the full freight kicks in. So if you're interested in our product, again, I am a much better writer than I'm a speaker. So if you're interested in this to the point where you sat through 12 minutes of this blathering, chances are you're going to like our website. So uh, please go check it out, and uh, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow.